Caution. Children should not attempt to carve without adult supervision. Please exercise extreme caution when handling knives. The producers and distributors of this program are not responsible for injury resulting from procedures described or demonstrated in this video. Please carve carefully. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm Gordy Falk. And this Halloween, I want to teach you how to carve a few really innovative, neat jack-o'-lanterns simply and easily. About eight years ago, I started carving pumpkins, and it got a little out of hand. I carved between 500 and 800 different pumpkins every Halloween. So that's about three, 4,000 pumpkins in the last eight years. I learned a few simple, innovative tricks, common sense type things that anybody who has done as many as I have would have thought of to make pumpkin carving simpler, more creative, and more fun. If you come with me now, we'll get started. We're gonna carve a few pumpkins, show you the tricks, and have a lot of fun. Shall we go? We've got a nice little five pound pumpkin here. And the first thing we have to do is get the top off. Most people make an elemental mistake. The pumpkin is a great big, huge piece of God's creation. And they want a great big, huge knife. And they reach in the drawer and pull out something that you could probably win the Peloponnesian Wars with. Now, you pick a knife like this, you are doomed to carve straight lines. Because, and we'll use the back side of this pumpkin, which is the practice side, you stick it in and you cannot make a turn. It is a straight line. What you want to do, and this goes for detopping, and we'll get more into the selection of knives for the actual face itself a little later on. You want to pick one of the skinniest knives in your drawer. This knife is a fruit knife. It's sharpened on both sides and is very narrow from front to back. And it costs about $1.79 in most grocery stores. It does a beautiful job of detopping and also carving. I'll be using this knife most of the day. We'll again go on the practice side here. And you can see how easy this goes in and how you can make nice curves with it. This is a good way to make the top. Stick it in. Now you notice while I'm carving, the knife is in at about a 45 degree angle. You don't want to go down like this because when you get your top off and you put it back on, it'll disappear into the insides. You want to make sure that the top, when it rests on it, has a place to rest. When I get around to where the top started, I make a little bit of a curly cue. You can carve a square, or there's any number of ways to do it. This just seems to be a nice, easy way. And the top goes back on and almost falls right into the spot. You can see. You can make them square, triangular, hexagonal, any way you want. Uh, they all work. This is just the way that I do it. And uh, I find it clean and simple. And now, we have the top off. We're ready to hollow it out. All right. We've got the top off, and we're ready to take out the insides. Some people would rather slaughter a cow than take the insides out of a pumpkin, but it's really pretty easy if you know a few tricks. The object, again, is pick the right tool. I use an old spoon with a wood handle, a nice stiff shaft, and it works pretty well. 
it works a lot better than putting your hands inside and getting all gunked up. It's not necessary. What I do is make a scraping motion along the sides, and in a minute or two, it's done. You're making the same motion the entire time. You're just rotating the pumpkin around and around and down and down. And if you have any luck at all, at the end, when you get to the bottom, you scrape sideways, straight down, because that's where it's attached to. And you got it all in one nice big lump. And, Lord willing, pumpkin is almost clean. We didn't say you could do this in a suit, but it's good enough to carve. In your drawer, most of you will have a paring knife, a normal knife, fairly thin. It works pretty well. An attractive face is one with curves, just like yours. There's not a straight line on any human being's face. It's all ovals, curves, S-shapes, and that's what makes the personality of a pumpkin. This is probably the number one knife that I use, and it can be bought at any store. This knife is about four or five inches long, relatively thin, and this is important. It is sharp on both ends. This is another good knife. You can find similar knives, not the same one. This knife right here has carved two or 3,000 pumpkins in about the last eight years. It's flexible skinny from the sharp end to the butt end, and it is not exceedingly sharp. It doesn't need to be. If it's thin enough, it'll go through the pumpkin quite easily. Here's another knife that'll work well. It might be in your drawer, and it is also skinny and flexible. We want to practice on a part of the pumpkin that we're not going to use a good place to practice is on the back. Most pumpkins, you can tell what the back is by where it was laying on the ground when it was growing. Here's one. You can see it's got a little few blemishes, etc. When we picked this one out earlier, it was full of black dirt. The best place for the face is generally opposite the part where the pumpkin was laying on the ground. Now, the critical thing you want to find out is how small a curve you can make with your knife. And then you don't want to attempt anything smaller than that, otherwise you'll botch the job. You can make nice little practice circles on the back of your pumpkin. What I do, stick it in, put a little pressure sideways, and just in a sawing motion, start twisting and turning. Now, that's a pretty small hole. Maybe your knife won't carve a hole like that. Let's see how big a hole we'll be able to carve with the normal paring knife. We'll stick it in, put the twist on it. Whoops, we hit a soft spot, that happens. You can stick the knife back in and keep the pressure on, and you can see our hole is quite a bit bigger. For little kids, like my pal Lindsay here, I recommend the pumpkin cutter. It's safer than a regular knife. It is easy to use. It has no sharp edges, and you can carve a terrific face with it. And remember, kids, Always use the pumpkin cutter with... Your mom or your dad. Great. Good advice. Now we're ready to think about putting a face on this guy. Most people, unless they know exactly ahead of time in their head what they want to put on the pumpkin, will draw something first. We're going to use a magic marker, and we're going to put a triangle face on this pumpkin, the traditional pumpkin that's carved with the fat knife. 
but with a difference. We're going to put a few radiuses on there, and we'll show you how to do that. This is the face that you carve using a big knife. Triangle nose, generally a mouth that looks something like this, with maybe a tooth like that. All straight lines, all right? And sometimes it's off center. <clears throat> what we'll do, I'm gonna use the smallest knife and we're gonna carve around the area. We go up, now when we get to the top, we're gonna make a gentle curve instead of the sharp turn, and that's the advantage of the thin knife. We get there, now notice the sawing motion. I make a nice little sawing motion. Now, we'll do the same thing with the other side. Make a nice sawing motion. I didn't complete the bottom because we're gonna do what? Make a pupil. And I'll draw that so that you can see. It's gonna be like that. I'll stay on the inside of it so it doesn't show up on the pumpkin. The line well, we can get rid of that later. Just around like that. I put my hand inside, and you notice I'm holding my finger on the thing, because once in a while, you don't get a clean cut, and you can push out from the inside with your finger. Now, what I also did, I bent this thing, and I want it to stay in there. The time-honored way of fixing pumpkins, and it works extremely well, is with a toothpick. We just press down, so that the part is solid along its original fracture. Stick the toothpick straight down as far as it'll go, and you break it off, and lo and behold, that thing is on there nice and tightly. Now we'll repeat the same thing on the next side. Using the outline of the triangle as our basic area, we'll make our turns, trying to keep the proportions the same and make our pupil. All right, now we have the eyes, right? Now we have to work with the triangle nose. What we're gonna do there is give this guy big wide nostrils. Notice the curves again. Little peak of the nose, we're going ray right out, back in, now that's basically a triangle nose, but he has nice wide nostrils. Now you notice what happened here. It's not the same. Sometimes that doesn't make a difference. On this pun, this pumpkin, I'm gonna try to make this side the same size as the bigger one. I can't make that smaller, so I've gotta make my adjustments on the small side and make it large. You can go right back in and make a curve to kinda of correct it and make it like the other one. Even if you mess up, save the piece. Stick it back, takes a little bit of care, and with the old toothpick, you can stick it right back on again. I'm not gonna take the time to get it exact, but we don't need to do that, but you don't have to worry about making a mistake. The easier and the more fluid you carve, the better looking your pumpkin's gonna be. Now we're gonna make his mouth. This time, we'll go right along the straight line. When we get to the end, we're gonna make him smile. We'll curve up. We're gonna come down, and we're curving now, but we're sort of the same idea of the straight line. Now, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, is make a big, dumb, happy tooth. Here we're, these are straight lines. They're easy to do. We're staying on the inside. Uh, you can carve lots of teeth in a mouth, but it's been my experience that you don't need a bunch of teeth to make a nice personality pumpkin. And this guy, I 
Let's see how he looks. We can erase those lines. Notice again, I'm keeping my thumb on the weak section so it doesn't pop off like that first eyeball did. And there he is. What else do we have to do? Every human being has eyebrows. Unless you're one of these high fashion gals who plucks them out, but we'll pretend that you're normal and we'll give you a couple of eyebrows. We'll talk about eyebrows a little later. Eyebrows are an accent on the pumpkin. The real pumpkin personality of the pumpkin is formed by the eyes and the mouth. Even the nose is secondary, but it all adds up and it makes a nice looking pumpkin. Now that we've finished my twist on the traditional triangle face, we have another pumpkin that we've already marked with my favorite Halloween face. This is a pumpkin that can be carved with a normal paring knife that most of you have in your drawers. You don't need the real skinny one because the curves are relatively gentle. I'll show you how to do this. This face I started doing when I was a teenager and I've sort of adapted it, but it stayed the same for a long time and it seems to be everybody's favorite Halloween face. Scary and happy, evil and friendly at the same time, if that's possible. Here we go. I always start with the eyes and the small features first. The mouth I save for last because that's the biggest. Now you notice during the sawing motions, I'm where the curves are tightest, you gotta saw the hardest and put some good twist on there. You can practice that on the back of the pumpkin if you want. I'm also staying outside the lines so that the dark marks come off with the piece. We do the nose. We save the biggest piece for last and that's the mouth the reason for that is the small pieces are hard to carve. They take a lot of twisting and turning sometimes. And if you take the mouth out first, the structure in the front of the pumpkin is gonna be so weak that the thing is gonna be wobbling in and out when you do a small section. We're ready for the mouth. Also, you can't be afraid to cross over. And I'll show you what I mean when I get up to a corner. I'll purposely make a mistake. Notice how I'm backing the knife out a little bit to make the sharp curves. Now let's say you make a mistake like this. You go, oops, and that happens. You don't worry about that. I don't know if you can see that line there, but it's carved all the way up there. That won't show. In fact, that'll weld back together again. You just carve where you want it to start from. And I'll make the bottom of the pumpkin. You notice also that there are no teeth in this guy. And most of the curves are fairly gentle. And I'm still using the sawing motion. If I'm lucky, it'll come out in one piece. Now, the only problem with this face is that he's a little weak. If you have a problem with that, you can reinforce it with toothpicks. We won't draw this guy on. I've carved this face a number of times. You may recognize, as I go along here, some of the features. That's because many of the faces that I've done are from when I was in school, I wasted time, I shouldn't say wasted. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Baxter, would be disappointed if I ever told her that I was doodling during her fascinating lectures. But I used to draw in the margins of my notebooks 
when I was in classrooms that wouldn't hold my attention. So I was cartooning, basically, and a lot of my faces are just cartoon features. And I do them without drawing it on because it would take me forever since I'm doing hundreds of pumpkins every Halloween in a two-week period. That Does anybody recognize that nose and those eyes? Those are stolen directly from Beetle Bailey. Those are Sarge's, that's Sarge's nose and his eyes. The mouth is different. And we give this guy one big, silly, happy tooth. You notice I'm overlapping the strokes. It doesn't make any difference on the inside of the mouth. It's just gonna be a piece that you throw away anyway. Now he's big, open mouth. Don't be afraid to make your features big. Use the whole face of the pumpkin. It gives it a lot of personality. See, isn't he big and smiley? The only thing we need now, eyebrows. Then again, the eyebrows follow the contour, basically, of the eye. And don't worry, you see how fast I go. Don't worry if it isn't perfect. As long as the lines are clean and the proportions are halfway decent, it doesn't have to be perfect the same on both sides. In fact, that sometimes gives the face a little more personality. Then you can go back if you want and you're not happy with the corner of a mouth or something. You can trim it up. Now see that piece didn't come out. I got to go in there and recut. All right. Got a couple of pieces in there. We dump them out. Basically, Mr. Happy. As long as we're talking about that, we can do some ears too. Ears are great for lifting pumpkins. And the reason I carved ears in the giant pumpkins is that's the best way to carry them. Here's a nice fat and happy ear. Another nice thing about ears, you can really go fast because they're different sides of the pumpkin. Nobody can see if one of them doesn't match the other. As long as the general design is the same, you can do them real fast. So there's his ears. You lift them up by the ears. One thing, if you're planning to put your pumpkin outside with a candle on it, you might not want to put ears on it because that creates another area for the wind to come in and it's very hard to keep it lit on a windy night. The other alternative is to put a piece of tape. The clear tape is best because then you can still see the ear, but you can put tapes over the sides and even over the face if it's clear tape. And we got to pick out a nice pumpkin for a cat face. This is as good as any. We'll get rid of some of these pieces. Now, I want to use this part of the face. The pumpkin is leaning forward. And you want the pumpkin to kind of look up. Most of them get on the ground or something. You can correct that. If you want your pumpkin to face a little bit different way, go back to your big knife. This is a good one for this purpose. Lay it on the side and the face going straight up. You want to make that thing level or you want to make it so it's like this. And you make a cut parallel to the way you want it to sit. So I'm going to take this thing about here, get a little bit of purchase on it, and cut off a pretty good hunk of the bottom in a straight line. Now that thing sits pretty straight. It's no longer into the ground. And this is the best side of the pumpkin. The back side here was the side that was growing on the ground. Now we'll put a cat in here. Start out with the ears. A little pointy. We'll make the inside. Then again, I put my hand inside and push the piece out from the back. That's the cat's ears. This one, of course, you won't put ears on the sides. <laughs> then again, you can see that they're not symmetrical. They're not the same. It doesn't make much difference. Look you how know, funny Bill the cat is if you ever read Bloom County. 
That's the one messed up cat, but he sure is popular. And nothing on him is symmetrical. Cat ears. Cat's eyes are kind of sinister. They look like a, a seed or an almond or a fish without a tail. Again, we put a little pupil in there. You can see it seems like I'm going fast here sometimes. Don't, don't be discouraged if you don't go fast. You don't have to go fast to make it work. Kitty's got a little pink nose with upside down nostrils. And Kitty's mouth is like a W that's round. Awfully big ears. This must be some sort of exotic Chinese breed. Now the only thing the kitty needs is what? Whiskers. Long, thin cut. Do the out and back first, then just stick the knife right in. If you're lucky, the whisker comes right out. But she needs a couple of whiskers there. This is a delicate part. So when you're doing cat, Make sure it's not the first pumpkin you do. You have a good chance of messing it up. And two whiskers inside generally gets the idea across. If you were working on a bigger pumpkin, you could put in three or even four. And then we'll give her a couple of Garfield dimples there. This is a good way to make nostrils on other pumpkins. There's Kitty with curved ears. There are many things to tell you about candling. The easiest part is getting the hole in the bottom. We go back to the big knife again. It's got several uses outside of not being able to carve a good face. What I simply do is stick the knife right smack dab in the middle of the pumpkin in the bottom, start twisting it and push it all the way through and it puts a round hole in there. This has several advantages. We take our candle and it fits right in the hole. When the candle is, when the pumpkin is outside and it's burning, sometimes you forget about it, it burns all the way into the bottom. If the hole doesn't go all the way through, you can't get it out. With the hole all the way through, you can take that candle, if it burns out, and simply turn the pumpkin over and push it out, push out the candle stub when it has, when, if you did forget it and it's burned down. Another thing, the size of the candle you use should fit the pumpkin. The lids, even though they look pretty thick, an hour or two of burning will shrivel up this lid like crazy and it won't even fit on the pumpkin. You want to make sure to keep the top of the flame at least that far from the top of the pumpkin. That limits the size of the candle you can use. In this pumpkin, I wouldn't use a candle much bigger than this one. That's pretty short, but in no wind or inside, this candle should burn, this is a normal dinner candle, for an hour to three hours. And that's a good time. <laughs>